the most of my opportunities at FSU. So I've been super involved. My main involvement has been in the Hispanic Latino Student Union, in the Women's Student Union, Global Peace Exchange, NAACP, CAUSA, and my hobbies really are traveling. I've been to 18 countries, uh, five different continents, a lot of it paid for by FSU, so if you guys need advice on traveling, please let me know. In addition, my pride and joy is um, our organization, GAUSA. It was founded in 2018. We became an official RSO in 2019. Our biggest goal has been to be um, as inclusive as possible. We have people from all over the world as um, our members. We have people of different genders, different abilities. So. It's always been an inclusive environment. We're very politically active. I think CAUSA is inherently political. So you'll see us at marches, at protests, and co-sponsoring. We're also dedicated to community engagement. So la this last semester, we were doing community service at least bi-weekly at the local Kearney Center. And we also volunteered at the dog center, dog shelter. So that was really fun. And we've gotten to know many people through that. So um, these are also eligible for serve script hours. So if anyone's interested in volunteering in the future, please again message us. Uh, lastly, we're really big on socials. We have monthly horchata nights and horchata nights. Uh, they consist of literally that horchata is a corn drink. It's traditional in Central America. And we usually have food. We always make sure to have vegan options available. A lot of our members are vegan. And they're usually at the end of the month, they're a chance for us to mingle, reconnect, and Think of like the next year. Future goals is something that the eboard and I really wanted to get started this year, but unfortunately, due to COVID, won't be happening. We were trying to begin fundraising so that we could cover DACA renewal fees. DACA renewal fees are at least five hundred dollars, and that makes it really unaccessible to a lot of Central Americans. So we were hoping to be able to at least sponsor a handful of students at FSU. And um, just to take our Ochata nights to another level, I really wanted, I really want to have a Latin night. Those are always fun. Uh, excuse the blurry picture, but uh, before everything, Causa got to start its own pupuseria. We went to the farmer's market and we sold baleadas and pupusas. We made over $300 that day. So we had people come in and all over the community. Uh, pupusas are really easy to make. You find them throughout Central America. It could be from El Salvador, it could be from Honduras. It's a big debate, but we all enjoy these and this is what we're gonna cook today. Uh, I put on the right hand upper corner are uh, vegan options and vegetarian options. If you didn't want any meats, you could just do wheat fried beans. If you wanted to do a vegetarian, you could add cheese. And if you wanted to get really creative, you can do pulled pork and cheese and, or, and bean or whatever. I have made some cool pork already so that I could test around that one. So we're gonna, Jesse's gonna take us through that trip and see how it goes. But other than that, thank you so much. And let me see if I can get back to you guys. If you can click stop sharing. All right, got it. Oh, uh, yeah, whenever Jesse's ready. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Thank you for your presentation. So, Jesse. Where's Jesse? Hey everybody, welcome back to the virtual coffee hour. Uh, today we are going to go through how to make pupusas and cortido. Uh, pupusas are a corn cake uh, that Melissa was telling us that's filled with different types of ingredients. Today we're going to do uh, some red beans and cheese that are mixed together. Um, and you can also just do plain refried beans. Uh, and then another version uh, is called chicharron where you cook uh, pork uh, shoulder uh, in a pan and add a bunch of seasonings and grind it up and add that as a filling. Uh, all versions are really delicious and so uh, I encourage you to try one. They're, they're pretty easy to make. Uh, if you don't want to try one, there is an El Salvadoran restaurant in town. It's called El Vino Vina. 
and it's up in the north side of town. Uh, I actually checked with them today. They are open till seven and they are doing takeout. And they make delicious pupusas as well as uh, all types of other El Salvadoran food. Uh, so today let's start with the cortito. This is something you want to start early um, before you uh, get into the corn cakes. This can sit overnight uh, to really like uh, kind of marinate and, and get a strong flavor. It's uh, basically a cabbage and uh, other vegetable kind of quick pickle. And it's really great topping uh, for this and tacos and all kinds of other things. So if you make a nice big batch of this and you keep it in your fridge and kind of pull it out when you want to eat it, and you know, it'll stay good in the fridge for quite a while. So the easiest way to do this is just get the angel hair coleslaw mix. It's just a uh, green cabbage that's shredded up real fine. This is one bag. It's probably about five, maybe six cups. So it's a little more than the recipe, but it, it works fine for the recipe too. Uh, the last bag I opened up, there were some like stem pieces that were kind of shredded in there. So you want to kind of go through and pick out the big chunks. Maybe it's like kind of getting a little brown. So you just want a nice fine shredded pieces. All right, quality control here. All right, so that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna do some carrots. I think in the recipe I said about a cup. I and mean, this is up to you too. If you like carrots, I really like carrots. I'm just gonna put a big handful of shredded carrots. I got all this stuff at Publix, easily accessible. Don't have to do much vegetable prep for this. Um, the next two ingredients, we have some uh, white onion um, and we have some serrano chilies. Uh, these chilies can be pretty spicy, um, so if you do not like hot food, you probably won't be able to put a lot of this in there. Um, but uh, I found that when the last batch that I made, they really didn't spice it up too much, but they did give it a nice uh, green pepper kind of flavor. So it probably depends on the chili time of the year, how spicy it really is. Uh, you could also use jalapeno. Uh, but So all the other ingredients, we want to slice these very thin. I've got a cool tool I want to show you all today. Uh, that I have at my house here and um, is to use it for all types of things. Uh, you can shred with it. You can julienne, which this is a julienne. It's like matchstick. Sorry. Um, it comes with different blades. And this is a, it's called a Ben Reiner. It's made in Japan. It's a Jap Japanese mandolin. Uh, and you basically can set the level of how thin or thick you want to slice something. It's a little screw on the back. And then you just kind of set your vegetable or fruit or whatever it is on top and you just do a little quick slice. It does come with a safety guard which I lost mine so you might want to first few times you do it use the safety guard because you can easily slice your finger. So we're cutting the onion. I like the onion really thin so you don't get a chunk of onion in here. But you'll get a nice onion flavor into the whole pickle. Where did you get this? <laughs> uh, so I got this one, I think Lynn's, they, uh, the Asian store in town here. I think I picked it up from them, but they don't always carry it. You can just get it online. It's on. I think they have it on, you know, like Amazon and Walmart, all those different online shops have them. I think they run for about 25 bucks, 30 bucks maybe. And then when I've had this one for years and the blade is still sharp, it's, it's literally like a giant razor blade in here. And, uh, but you can buy replacement blades and it's, you can shred cabbage, you know, anything, you know, you can slice it really, really thin very easily. Uh, even these chili peppers. So I'm not going to get my hands too spicy today. I'm just going to do it over top of the bowl actually. Yeah, here. I'm just gonna get the little chili slices in there. Oops, I'm not gonna get too close here. There we go. All right, so. After you've gathered up all your vegetables in a nice uh, non-reactive bowl, uh, we want glass or stainless steel here. Um, we're going to add four cups of boiling water to this. Okay, so we're just going to pour it over top. That's going to soften the vegetables and kind of make this pickling process go a little bit faster. 
So we'll have a pair of tongs back here. Kind of mix things up a little bit. Get that onion down in there. That'll take this water will help take away kind of that acrid onion taste. And what will be left will just kind of be the sweet onion flavor. We're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes or so, and then you drain it off in a colander and then put your vegetables back into this bowl. We're just gonna set it aside for a second. So when you um, use the bowl, why why do does it have to be a glass or stainless steel bowl, or we have other? Uh, well, if you use a plastic bowl, the hot water might soften it. You know, so and it could melt it. And then if you have like an aluminum bowl or aluminum pot, what we're going to do next is we're going to add a lot of vinegar to it. And vinegar reacts with aluminum in a way that's not good to eat. So you want to use a non-reactive bowl for this uh, glass or stainless steel is your best option. Um, Thank you. Yeah. All right, so for our ingredients for our corn cake, we've got two cups of, um, we're using the pan brand cornmeal. Again, we did this for our um, African or Botswana meal a few weeks ago and they have this at Publix too. Uh, you can also use a brand called Maseka. It's kind of the same thing. I got the white corn uh, I guess tight and um, it's a cooked corn that's dried and then ground up and so it easily forms a dough um, yeah. for this. This is what like the Maseka option is in case anyone wants to get it. Um, you can get them at Publix or you, if not there you can get it at Silver Lake that's on Pensacola. It's not too far. Yeah, yeah. Silver Lake has a lot of good options locally for Hispanic foods. Um, so yeah, the, then I've got about a teaspoon of salt in there. Um, and then we're gonna mix that in a minute. Let's skip over to the beans and everything here real quick. So the beans, this was one can of uh, small red beans. And that's probably about a, a cup and a third, a cup and a quarter of beans. And then I've got two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese here. Um, if you like it more cheesy, you know, this proportion is kind of up to you. You can definitely add a little more cheese to this if you want the cheese to be oozing out from the center, which a lot of people really like that. I'm kind of in the middle range. I like, I like it to be cheesy, but not overly cheesy. And so you're just gonna mix it together here. The beans should be, these were canned, and so we pulled them out, we drained them, and then we rinsed them. And then from here, you can just use a masher mash it up with the masher and then at some a certain point you want to mash it with your hands uh, the masher is not going to do enough i'm going to set that aside real quick i've got another batch that i made earlier i'll show you what i did I keep my hands clean right now so this is you want it to be really mashed together so it's like a kind of a pasty dough that can be formed into a bowl okay all right so I'm not gonna let this cortito sit for 10 minutes. This is gonna work for me. We're gonna move it along here. So we're just gonna drain it in the colander. I'm gonna shake all that excess water out. Okay, we're gonna. Put it back into the bowl. So to this cortito, we're going to add one cup of white uh, distilled vinegar. And so this, this liquid isn't gonna cover it all the way. We're just gonna add it in there and then we're gonna transfer it to another container, like a high-sided container. We're gonna do about a tablespoon of salt and then about a quarter teaspoon or so of oregano and that's kind of taste too if you like a strong oregano flavor you can put a little extra oregano in there the dried oregano flavor really goes a long way so a quarter teaspoon to me is is good enough but this is a recipe that you can mess around a little bit with if you like it more spicy add more chilies if you like more oregano then you can add a little more oregano you could experiment with different vegetables in there too. I'm sure radish would be pretty good. 
you know. Um, so you can you can mess around with that a little bit and add different things. So from here, we're just gonna mix everything together, get a good coating and get that salt dispersed between everything really well. The salt is gonna pull more liquids out of the vegetables. And the vinegar is going to penetrate into the vegetables and give you this nice, salty, crunchy, a little bit spicy condiment for, it's great. this is great with um, seafood, with fish, fish tacos in particular, I can really see this one really good with that. So green salsa, some grilled fish. Mm. Dr. Jesse, I have a question. Have a question. Okay. So are you supposed to drain like the water out of the veggies completely or you can leave some water in? I would drain all of it out uh, or most of it. Uh, if you leave some in, it's going to dilute the vinegar base in it. And it's the vegetables themselves are, have so much liquid in them that it's the, veg, the liquid in the vegetable is going to dilute the vinegar to the point that it's that it tastes good. So if it's too watery, you won't have that vinegary bite to it. And this should really be pretty strong vinegar kind of flavor with the vegetables. And so earlier I made a batch of this and this has been sitting for a day. So I transferred it to this high top container here. And this can be, this can be plastic at this point. Although in all the stuff I saw online, uh, they, it was in glass, like kind of like mason jars. So really tall, uh, kind of high-sided um, glass containers that have a nice sealed lid on it. Because what's going to happen when you put it in the high side container is the liquid's going to come up and then it's going to bare almost cover it and then it sits for a day and more liquid comes out of the vegetables and then that liquid's going to rise to the top and it'll cover it and it'll stay preserved in there and this will this will stay good in your fridge for you know a couple weeks to a month no problem um, because of the salt and vinegar content in it. But uh, so that's the cortito. You're gonna transfer that to a, a different container, seal it up, put it in your fridge at least overnight or longer, and uh, it'll be ready when you want. All right, we're gonna set this back side over here. Okay. All right. So back to the masa and making the dough. This is the trick to this recipe, is getting the dough mixed in here correctly, getting the right amount of moisture mixed into the dough. Um, we're gonna mix in that salt so it's nice and distributed. I'm not gonna have any salty patches. And this was two cups of the, the pan cornmeal. And then I've got about two cups of kind of room temperature warm water. I'm just gonna pour this in and kind of stir as we go here. This is something you're gonna have to do with your hands at a certain point too. You really gotta feel this texture of this dough with your hands. And so you can only do so much with a spoon. I really like this, the pupusas and this recipe, this food, it's like, really feels like it's handmade because it's the only way to make it. Okay. All right, so this is getting pretty stiff. I'm gonna switch off and get in there with my hands now. And I was finding that two cups equal parts is pretty good mixture. Uh, but once the, this dough sits for a little bit, it, uh, turn tends to like kind of firm up a little bit and so you can add a little bit more water after it's rested for a bit and you'll see when we start forming these uh, what what it looks like here and so you want to any lumps in here you want to get any lumps out and you're just mixing it mixing it. it takes a couple minutes here it's really good if the dough mixed properly okay So if you go to a restaurant that serves pupusas, um, what, what is that called, Melissa? Is there a special name for it? 
For what? Uh, oh, for pupusa places, they're usually called pupes, pupuserias. I get stuck every time. You're, it's usually on um, street food. So if you were in Central America, you could easily find this locally. Um, here in the U.S., it's usually like a nice restaurant, probably Salvadoranian. But um, causa, we call it pupuserias whenever we sell it at the farmer's market. Oh, cool. Pupuseria. Yeah. You're um, cooking as well at the same time. <laughs> hmm. This one's turning out a little bit lumpy in here. So I'm just going to keep mixing it a little bit longer. Just break them up with your hands a little bit. You want it to be nice and smooth throughout. I think this is going to need a little more water. It's a little bit dry. Let me get a little more water. Yeah. Be generous with the water. My first mistake was not putting enough water. Right, that's something that definitely comes with uh, practice on this too, is yeah, getting the texture and the feel and kind of seeing how the dough reacts over time. From what I understand, people that work at Pupu Series, they, like, this is like an art form and it's like, you know, uh, uh, an important skill. I was reading some other stuff about pupusas and how the history of them goes back to the indigenous people there in the region of El Salvador. And so it's really a ancient style of food. It's filled with corn cakes and it's, it's not that, it's different than arepas in uh, Colombia and Venezuela, but it's definitely it has some similarities. Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, when you really do it, you will have more questions than you can know, like wh which part is wrong or like the question will pump out. So as, as well, like we uh, highly encourage you to do this <laughs> with this video. That will be really fun. Then you can pump out your questions as Melissa did. <laughs> All right. So we're going to let this sit for a minute and firm up some more. Um, Laura and I, last week, we worked on another video for a few days uh, on uh, a fun dessert that we featured at Coffee Hour a few times. It's called Honey Toast, and it's part of the NOLGRAD activities that the Division of Student Affairs is putting out. Uh, I want to encourage everybody, whether you're graduating or not, to uh, check out that video and uh, go ahead and try to make it if, if you're interested. It's a delicious ice cream dessert. It's really easy to make, and it's just a lot of fun. Whenever we've done it for coffee hour, people always get a big kick out of it. So that's uh, it's on our YouTube channel. I think Rebecca's going to post a link to it. Okay. Let me dry my hands here. It's in there. Cool. All right, let me clear my area here. It's good to let this dough sit for a minute or so. We'll, just, we'll see how it goes here. So you've got your cheese and your bean mixture, your dough, and then we also have this little bowl of water with a little bit of oil mixed into it. Let's mix a little more oil into it. And so we're going to use this uh, to kind of grease our hands up a little bit while we're forming the pupusas so that they don't stick to your hands too much. And it'll actually give a nice little layer of oil on the corn cake so that when we're cooking it, it's already kind of pre, pre oiled, so we don't add very much oil to the pan at all. All right. Okay, so. First step is to get your hands oiled up a little bit. Get the water oil mixed up. You don't want them too, you don't want them wet. You don't want them dry. We're going to come in and get a nice chunk of masa dough. We're looking at um, tennis ball size, maybe. That's about tennis ball size. And then we're going to form it into a disc. This disc can be pretty rough shape. The outside should be smooth. If it's cracking, you know you need to add extra water. 
And then this one, the bean mixture, whatever mixture you're using, should be more about the golf ball size, maybe racquetball size. I'm gonna go golf ball size is a little small here. And that's gonna go right into the center here. And then from there, you take the outside of the dough, you wrap it up over top, and then you pinch this extra part off. And then you've got your dough ball with your filling on the inside. And from here, you gently pat it back and forth and it'll slowly form out into a disc. Okay, you can come in and kind of kind of tighten up the edges a little bit. Okay, that's looking pretty good. That's a good one. Okay, and so we are about a third to a half inch thick. We're about five inches across. Um, this is one pupusa is a good appetizer for someone. Two to three is a good meal. And so this recipe should make mm, six to eight, depending on what size you really make it. All right, so we're gonna bring it over to our pan here. Um, online, I saw a lot of people use uh, non-stick skillets, uh, which are really handy. You just set a, an exact temperature on there. I think they use 350 degrees, and they just go right onto the non-stick skillet without any oil or anything. Uh, they just, whatever oil was on here. I'm using the stainless steel pan, uh, so I'm going to do a really light spray of non-stick pan spray, and that's it. And then I am about, I'm going to start off at about a medium, then I'm going to turn it down just a little bit, so it's uh, like a high, medium, low. Keep this thing moving here. Okay. So how are you supposed to do this, like, back and forth? <laughs> well, they still like on the wrist, you yes. gotta like. Time. Yes. And like you kind of want the tortilla to rotate while you're doing it, like so it's always like going a little turn. Once you get this little movement going, unstoppable. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's you know once you get the feel for it, and once you get your dough to the right consistency, consistency, it really it comes together pretty easily. Um, but it does take practice for sure. And you know, when you first try it, your hands will be all sticky and it'll feel all weird. You just kind of got to keep working through it and it, uh, it'll come together. And so we're starting on a medium heat here. We're going to go down to a, a low, medium, high. It's going to cook for about four minutes on this side. You don't want to flip it over and over again. You just want to flip it once and that's it. So you cook it on the side four minutes, flip it, cook it for four minutes. Cheese should be coming out losing in some spots. That's fine. It shouldn't all necessarily be stuck on the inside. It's not going to be perfect. And then you're going to put it on the side to, to cool here. Um, and then you top it with a cortito and um, some red salsa. That's also really good with it. And um, have it for an appetizer and entree. Um, this is one I finished up earlier today. I'm trying to heat it up real quick here. Um, and this is what it should look like. I got some cheese and bean oozing out of the side here, and then a lightly brown kind of spot, spots all over the top here. This is, this is what we should look like. It shouldn't be, um, you know, really dark spots, but it shouldn't also be light. It should kind of look like the moon. You know how the moon has little craters? That's, what, that's kind of the look you're going for. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. That's a good reference. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how you make pupusas. And um, if you're making a big batch, actually, the best way to do it is to make all of your pupusas in advance. And you can kind of pan spray the pan, do a layer of plastic wrap, you know, do them all in advance, and then just cook them, cook them off, you know, all together. If you're going back and forth too much, you can kind of get mixed up a little bit. And it's easier to do it all at once, keep your hands dirty, and then keep them clean. Um, but all right, let's serve this one up. And then also, actually, I've got this. I went to Silver Lake this week. See how they're doing. They're actually staying pretty busy over there. Uh, and uh, I picked up some horchata from them. Uh, I've also looked, and we made this for coffee hour from scratch. Uh, but this is actually a really good uh, basic uh, concentrate here. It's uh, just rice and sugar and cinnamon and almonds. It's really, 
very basic because I was like, oh, I'll, I'll actually get some. So this one they sell there, you just pour a little concentrate in, mix in some water. It's about one to seven ratio, and so you can kind of taste it and adjust it if you want to. But I'm going to have some horchata, which my And here's some cortina. Mm -hmm. And from also what I read online is that this should be eaten with your hands too. I mean, you can eat it with a fork and knife, but it is definitely something that's made to just be picked up and eaten with your with your hands, and that is definitely the way. Yeah, I am a hundred percent advocate for eating with your hands. Like, obviously, wash your hands. But there's, it just makes it a little bit more tasteful. You don't taste the metallic of a fork or anything. And mm -hmm. it's also a very Central American thing to do. We usually get a tortilla and we'll like use that as like a scooper to eat, um, like whatever rice or beans or whatever. And you know, something about getting into your food is just a little bit better. All right, there we go. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Mm. I recommend everyone to check out El Viralino in town. Really delicious restaurant. They are open for carry out right now. And you can get this from them. So there uh, tomorrow. Can we see the inside? Like after you bite, can we see the inside, how it looks like? Mm -hmm. So this one isn't super hot. Mm -hmm. This one did have cheese oozing out of it. But, you yeah. So you've got corn, mm. the bean, the mashed bean and cheese filling and corn. So it's really like a really thinly filled corn cake, but it's not a lot of corn, it's not a lot of cake. It's like the even amount of filling and, and corn really. Mm. It's delicious. All right, everyone, thanks for joining again. Um, Yang, I want to say bye to you. I know this is your last coffee hour with us until next year. Thanks a lot for all your help. And um, hope you have a great summer. Everybody say bye to Yang for me. And um, Dylan, too. All of our GAs. Ray, Dylan, wish you all the best. And uh, back to you, Yang. That's sweet. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you. I'll be back for the fall. I will just be gone for summer. But I'll be physically in Tali. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that looks so good. Melissa, do you have something to share at last? I cannot end. Hello, Melissa. Mine still need a little bit of love. I just checked. So give me like two more minutes. <laughs> okay. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you. Um, so, uh, well, thank you everyone for attending our Jesse's uh, cooking show. So, uh, following that, we're going to break out everyone to the conversation rooms. I will share some uh, conversation topics with everyone so that you can have an icebreaker to start your conversation. And uh, while Melissa is cooking, uh, and hopefully we can have her final product after our, after our conversation. Thank you, Melissa, for joining us today. Thank you. Of course.